Hey Scrapper, Sam here. Got some pretty exciting news for you. This time around, for Jimmy Fame Presents Bonus Against the Machine, more Pod for Your Bod, sponsored by Charlie the Lizard Folks Chicken Emporium, more Cluck for Your Buck, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be combining our bonus game experience with a little thing called Third Party Con, which is this new convention coming up February 17th through 20th that is highlighting the third party creators uh, that work in the Paizoverse or adjacent to the Paizoverse creating content for Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2E, and Starfinder. As part of that convention, we're going to be playing Hope Finder, which is a hack of Pathfinder 2nd Edition that makes it into a zombie game, hence the, you know, zombie menacing horror noises that you can hear shuffling about behind me right now. Oh, we couldn't contain them. But the most exciting part of this announcement is the fact that the GM of this Hope Finder session as part of the convention is not going to be me. It's not going to be Jeff or Zach or Jero or Izzy. It's actually going to be the creator of Hope Finder, who happens to also be the creator of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. That's right, Jason Bowman is going to be running us through this game at Third Party Con. We're very excited to be playing with Jason. Uh, we think he's created a very cool new take on Pathfinder 2nd Edition where it's lower power, there's more danger, and the zombies are a legit uh, threat to murder us all, and almost certainly will. Uh, so we've got that to look forward to. Stay tuned for a link to the Twitch channel that things are going to be streaming on. We will be playing Sunday the 19th at 11 a.m. Pacific, so that's 2 p.m. Eastern and, you know, all the other time zones will have their corresponding times that I can't iterate all of right now. But suffice it to say, you're going to want to catch the video. It's going to be a wild ride. We'll be hanging out in the Twitch chat uh, to talk to people and um, yeah, we'll have a podcast version of it afterwards at some point. I guess that's it. That's the big announcement. I'm pretty excited. Are you excited? Oh, also, our Patreon slash Ko-Fi is going to be going through a bit of a makeover in the coming weeks. We should have some announcements right around the weekend of Third Party Con. That's definitely something to take a look at because we are going to have a lot more uh, rewards and interesting stuff to engage with and ways to get involved in the podcast. In the meantime, um, this is Pot Against the Machine. Welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only actual play that gets all glowy, knocks you down, and then runs away. I'm your host, and here's everybody. Just a normal hello today, everyone. I'm nailing it. Mm -hmm. And also cast. Yes, great job, everyone. Also, <laughs> I'm just privileged to be here with you, Izzy, because you are nailing it. Hello, gang. Stop it. Don't. Come on. Uh, please insert the next <laughs> CD to hear my hello. <laughs> <laughs> Flip over. God, remember cassettes? Like the music mm -hmm. kind, not the video kind? Mm. I remember both. <laughs> yeah, when when my basement was flooded and I had to um, move everything around, I found a whole box of mixtapes. I found a bunch of cassette, like video cassettes. I got all sorts of stuff that no one can use anymore. I found the, uh, I have a, I found a cassette that had just the song I'll See You When You Get There by Coolio and the 40 Thieves <laughs> from Nothing to Lose from back when they used to like give out promotional cassettes with just a single oh, song yeah. on them. I yeah, found I that when I moved into this house. There's not even a second song on the back? No, it's just that one. Oh man, what a rip off. A wasted back of dick. It was a promotional cassette. one for the movie Nothing to Lose with Martin Lawrence and the guy from uh, Shawshank Redemption. And Jacob's Ladder. I can't think of his name. Tim Morgan Robbins. Freeman. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Could be anyone. 
I don't know. Oh, we so what's your uh, what's your Tim <laughs> Robbins segue now, Jerome? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we are robbing uh, some dead androids. I'm sorry. I think the thing that sets us apart from other podcasts is that we don't even try to make us a segue. You we just, just go. wait six seconds of silence and then launch into yeah. the recap. So previously on the program, the party... Uh, made their or disabled a trap made their way into a flooded room where they found a computer and once they dispelled the flying toaster screensaver they found a video of somebody named Shoud uh talking to an invisible person named Sahasho looked like they were looking for something and they were pretty sure that it was here um then they opened uh, some jammed doors revealing a short hallway opened some non-jammed doors revealing a large room full of broken down machinery and some androids that looked like they were put together wrong like the the play-doh machine that makes the androids was like maybe melted or something they they just they were in a bad state uh they attacked and they actually did a a lot of damage to the party they almost took asher down they knocked kira to the ground and bashed her into a wall and uh, but the party ultimately triumphed and executed all of the poor, deformed androids. And that's where we are now, in a quiet, empty room. Uh, Asher, are you okay? Brixby kind of squints over. Last time that he saw him was on the ground being stomped upon. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he's, uh, <laughs> he was down to seven. Oh my god. Uh. Before he lay on hands himself all the way up to a robust 16. Uh, So he is kind of like nursing his shoulder a little bit from where he got slammed down to the ground. Uh, But he picks up his other pistol that he had no reason to drop because he has two hands and two holsters and two guns. Uh, But his players only has two brain cells. Uh, So, you know, it's thematic. Uh, And he loads just rounds all up in the chambers well they did seem very happy to see us and they let me know that in a rather physical way I might suggest or at least request that we take a moment to allow my allow me to heal myself or if Alwyn has spare healing or we have the wand but before we go opening any other doors it would be beneficial to me if we could pause for a moment are the rest of you okay um I mean comparatively speaking yeah like if I were to put you know all of our health into some sort of numerical form I would say even though I am under half I am still like twice as good as you no offense I didn't get hit at all yeah I got a a little bit of uh, off the backside but, but not too bad um but yeah, it looks like big stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I, you got this. Don't don't worry. But you, you should also really get healed. We're gonna need you to probably absorb much more. Yeah, I wonder if we could do that with fewer grenades. That was kind of a surprise. My bad. Sorry, bricks. Oops. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Yes, those seem like very dangerous weapons. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, speaking of which, it looks like we have a few here. Yeah, let's go grab those. Pull those bad boys off the bodies. Yeah, so those bodies, uh, between them, they had, uh, looks like, two concussion grenades each, but sadly, um, two of them were used to blow stuff up. Uh, They're each wearing a ramshackle assortment of pieces of scrap metal that functionally is equivalent to hide armor, and they each had chunks of spiky scrap metal, basically equivalent to a morning star. So, perhaps uh, we should grab a couple of uh, these grenades and whatnot. Also, uh, I, I don't think... Real quick, did we pop the rift boots on anybody's feet? Because we are screwing up if someone is not wearing those rift boots. It's not going to be Bricks Bill because he has Dimension Door. Um, and Boots of the Cat. Yeah, we should... Uh, I'm going to... Kira will give them to Asher, just as in between healings. Hey, Asher, um, I think that you should use these for now because um, sometimes when we're fighting stuff, it gets real busy, and I don't want to have to remember to use them 
which is true both in and out of character. Truly just don't, I mean, unless you like hate them and then fine, but I don't think that you do. And uh, while everybody's looking at their boots, uh, Alwyn kind of gathers everyone together and lets out just like a little puff of healing. And everyone gets uh, six back because I rolled much better than I was when I was rolling d6s last week. Nice. Yeah, it only took, with that, saved a charge. So only seven charges off the wand of Cure Light Wounds to bring Asher up to full with that channel. And he will nod at Cure and say, if you're certain, you uh, you don't mind me giving them a try. I, I hate to take away any of your canvases for your art, as it were, but... Oh, I can still decorate them. Mm. That's okay, no, I don't mind. You know, okay, I'll decorate. No, That's cool. It's, mm, thank you. Yeah. Ah, just when you're sleeping. I'm glad we had good talk. Um, great. So Asher takes the boots. Uh, Cura will take them back later and dunk them in glitter. It's going to be great. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and a bronze, bronze them again just for fun. Uh, <laughs> which the battery in them was depleted, so we'll need to replace that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm curious, you'd, you'd mentioned, Sam, all of this technological equipment all over these workbenches. I'm hoping there's maybe another battery or 40 in here. Um, well, you want to look around? Yeah. Um, if you're inspecting this place, I would take a, a knowledge engineering to sort of make sense of the machinery in here. Uh, you're not going to believe this. It's the exact same number of bridesmaids dresses as I have in my closet because that's a 27 knowledge engineer all right 2023 uh, that joke still ain't old (laughs) it'll never be old I'm surprised by the number every single time I can't keep in my head what number of actual bridesmaids dresses there is um but with that I've never seen 27 dresses (laughs) he has no idea what the reference is um, let's see, with a knowledge engineering, looking over all the various machines in this room, like, number one, you can tell that this stuff was just horrifically smashed in some sort of very violent situation, probably a very long time ago, and most of it is busted up bad, but it looks like basically the entire reason this room exists is to crank out androids and it looks like the machines um like it's a a foundry for lack of a better word that uh spends like it takes days and weeks to sort of build the body and infuse them with all whatever liquids and technologies yeah it's like the opening scene from uh show uh, westworld westworld oh, yeah. like yeah. the opening credits of westworld <laughs> it's exactly like the opening credits of westworld if somebody just hit them with a crowbar like over and over um yeah and so i'm guessing we can assume the reason they all look like that is because of all of the damage in this room it's messing up how they're built yeah and um with that good of a role i think asher can tell that this machinery like it hasn't been running like for thousands of years for however long the ship's been underground somebody reactivated it at some point much more recently like within several years does so. he get the know-how based off that role on how to deactivate it um i think that you could um do a disabled device um on the android foundry to get it to stop pumping things out but there's also a chance that it's basically going to run out of power before long and run out of capacity to make them yeah sounds like a convenient reason for us to leave it so they all respawn uh brixby you're exceptionally good at disabling things like you did with those holographic tables and i can't say for certain how long this would keep running but would you be able to stop this machine equipment. It's not like the foundry or the foundry, but it is like a foundry. And it's going to keep making these twisted androids if we don't stop it. 
Yeah, all right. Well, um, say no more after you say Foundry three three times. Uh, you've, you've got my attention. I'm just going to... Oh! <laughs> Brixby just takes a header straight into the machine, dropping his tools. Uh, that's a one off the die for a 17. Yeah, I'd, I'd say Brixby is... He's having a rough time understanding the machinery down here. Um, and it's just not working out. I, I don't think he can figure out how to break this thing short of just absolutely hacking it to pieces. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, this is, I'm not often going to say this, but this is beyond my comprehension. For what it's worth, it, it seems like it's barely hanging on. Um, and who knows how many resources it has, but unfortunately, it's uh, not something I can do. It's okay. I appreciate your honesty and your humility. So, what is the in and out? Uh, is that a door up there in the northeast corner? Uh, yeah, there's a, a door in the northeastern corner, which, you know, based on the geometry seems to lead into a small room and then the sort of room continues around these giant um, crushed pipes uh, looks like there's more room to the south and I think you can from where you're standing see a couple doors down there oh yeah I see that uh, should we just cover this small room in here and then perhaps proceed south you just poke your head in but maybe not your head let's poke someone else's head in do you want me to poke my well, head let in me, let me do the, the, the trap poking head thing checking to see all right this is yeah. a 30 or a 31 with a 16 off the day uh looks like there are no traps here all right uh it, it appears trap free so uh, carol will rush to poke in after <laughs> brixby uh because she doesn't trust his squishy face all right um opening the door to this oh, super tiny small room uh you see Looks like a storage room of some sort. Several old metal cabinets in various shades of disrepair are lined up against the northern wall. Check them. Searchy doodle. Did we see anything fancy there? Yeah. Okay, if you give it the old searchy doodle, um, well, you find uh, 40 silver discs. What well, looks like a um, time worn. Uh, White nano, white nanite hypo gun, Ooh. and then um, a a gun of some kind, and a, another weird device. Ooh, time to roll some knowledge engineers on this one. All right. Anything that would need spellcraft. Uh, these are gun. both engineering. Right, they're all. There we go. All right, that is a twenty-six knowledge engineering from Brickspell. All right, so the gun you're looking at. Looks like a time-worn arc pistol. Now, an arc pistol emits a bolt of ionized particles that it then electrifies, creating a crackling beam of electricity between it and its target. Arc pistols gain a plus two circumstance bonus on attack rolls against targets in, that are metal or are wearing medium or heavy metal armor. It appears to only have four charges left on the battery, and since it's time-worn, you can't recharge it, but still could be worthwhile. And uh, what about the device? Well, let me find the entry in the technology guide for the device. There's a 32 on my device of whatever this is roll. Just get my only 19 of the year out of the way. <laughs> um, it looks like you're looking at a white grade um, hologram generator. Now, this is a handheld device with a long, thin barrel that can manipulate photons and sound waves to produce a highly realistic image and sounds, similar to those generated by figment illusions. Uh, before a generator can generate an image, it has to store one in its memory, and the maximum size and maximum number of images the generator can store vary according to its color, but storing an image is a standard ac action regardless of the strength of the generator. More powerful generators can store moving images and sounds, or even generate illusions that interact with their environment. Once a hologram generator's memory is full, additional images overwrite existing images as chosen by the user at the time of their recording. Gen generating a hologram is a standard action. If the hologram generator is then left alone, it continues projecting the image until it depletes its charges. 
Alternatively, the user can aim the hologram at different locations as a move action. The hologram generator is color-coded. This is a white one. A white one can create a static, motionless image no larger than a large creature and can store up to five images. Ooh, can we tell if there's any images in there right now? If you want to take a standard action to activate it. Yeah. Asher, my friend. Brixby points it right at his face and says, What's this button do? <laughs> and then, ah. Well, if you take a standard action to activate it, then uh, it projects a picture of a gearsman uh, in better shape than the one you saw under the hill so long ago, but a gearsman nonetheless, very recognizable. Do we know, you said it could hold up to a number of images, five or something? Hold up to five images of um, something as large as a large size creature. How do we toggle to say, like, show me the next slide on your projector? It looks like that's the only image on there. You say that, but it's five different gears, man, and I'd like you to be more respectful and considerate <laughs> of their feelings. Interesting. This device can hold an image of you know something about our size or smaller, maybe even as large as when you enlarge a person to be the size large. It won't move or make any sound, but it's still pretty neat. Yeah, I could think of a uh a couple uses for that, for sure. We should hold on to it. It's, it reminds me of a spell. Uh, one that I don't have, but one I've heard of before. But, yeah, so I guess just throw it in the bag. Uh, looks like uh, you've exhausted the interesting contents of the room, but it also looks like um, Brixbo has kind of wandered out the door as everybody else is finishing up. And um, as he steps out the door... Let me just, um, let me just, flat-footed, uh, does a, only a 15, does a 15 Mm. hit Brixby's flat-footed touch AC? Yeah, if if it wasn't my touch, then yes, but it actually meets my flat-footed touch at 15. Okay, so, um, just real quick, that is not a ton 12 cold damage and uh, 7 sneak attack damage as um, a, a beam of ice shoots up at Brixby from the south as he steps out the door um, and he can see now and android um, looks like a woman at, but her face is it's like it, it's not lined up properly oh. like one half is like an inch higher than the other half with a bright red scar-like seam running through the middle of it. And she has long, like, ice blue hair, and she's wearing some sort of uh, fancy-looking armor. She obviously has the gun she just shot you with, and it looks like her limbs are, like, much longer and thinner than uh, the deformed androids that you saw before. Um... I don't know if you want to roll for initiative or if you just want to just stand there and let her keep shooting. Whatever whatever you want. Um, so what did um, Alowin get for initiative? Uh, Alowin got a 10 for a 17. That's not terrible. All right. Um, how about Asher? Uh, only an 11 for a 16. Not the fastest. How about Kira? Uh, that's a 1 for a Eesh. 6. And then a, a pretty important one. What did Brixby get? Uh, Brixby rolled a 5 for a 13. Okay. So, you know, kind of middle of the road across the board here. Um, well, this strange android who is crouched down behind a little bit of cover down there, uh, she gets to go first. She says, Tools of the Dominion, you will not take my mind. And then she's going to just set her gun on semi-automatic and take three shots at Brick's bow. Deadly aim. It's actually four shots. So first one versus flat-footed touch is only an eight. Does not hit. Second one, flat-footed touch is only a nine. Does not hit. Third one, flat-footed touch is an 11. Does not hit. 
And the fourth one, flat footed touch, crack die, is an 18. Does hit. Okay, so let's sneak attack once more because you are. Um, you haven't acted yet. 18 cold plus 9 uh, sneak attack, which I guess is probably also cold because of the circumstances. And uh, she is finished. Uh, Alan's up first. Right. Uh, well, this seems like the kind of person that I was saving all those spells for in the last fight. Uh, Alwyn is going to move out uh, 10 feet, passing through Kira and Brixby squares to get a direct line of sight on her. And how about she makes me a... What is this one again? A fortitude save. Fortitude save? Is this poison? It is not poison. Okay. Uh, only a 12. Uh, I didn't even think about this. Does she technically have a skeleton as an android? Um, I think they have a sort of polymer-based skeleton equivalent. That makes... Two. Okay. Are you uh, shaking her bones? That, that is a fail, and her bones are being shook. Uh, so that is 5d6 of bone shaking. Another 6. That is uh, 20 points of... I believe it is damage, I think it does. Uh, takes, oh no, it just says damage. It doesn't say what the type is. Okay. She do not like that. And also, uh, I always forget to do this part of it. Uh, I am going to force her five... Oh, actually, that's probably not the best thing because then nobody else can step out and shoot her several times with a revolver. I was going to break her line of sight on us, but <laughs> that wouldn't be good. So instead, I'm just going to shove her backwards five feet. All right. That's mean. Using someone's bones against them. I was going to move her to the left and block her ability to shoot us without having to move again. But then I realized Jeff wouldn't be able to shoot her either. And she could just five foot and murder bricks. And start shooting again, yeah, true. All right. On to Asher. Asher hears these cool icy shots ring out, and he will take a five-foot step out the door. What on Galarian? Uh, and we'll take a, a gander at this creature and roll a, would it be a loke or an engineering? I think it's a loke. Uh, 21 Luke. Uh, you can tell she's an android. Um, obviously another deformed android, but looks like she's deformed in kind of a, the opposite way of the other ones. Instead of being like hunched over and more muscular with her misshapen, she's more like long and graceful in her um, misshapen. So she's probably more on the dexterous side kind of thing. And she probably has some kind of class levels. If you have, like, one question you want to ask. Mm. Uh, this is not the question. I'm going to preface that. But when when we heard the voice calling out, Tools of the Dominion, you will not take my mind, what language was that in? Oh, that was in Androphon. Okay, so only Brix and Asher understood that. But useful. Uh, the one question. Mm. I, I kind of want to go for... Special defenses or resistances? What do you guys think? Uh, probably defenses, because she's probably got weird stuff because she's an android. Okay, yeah, any uh, special defenses? Um, well, she does have the constructed traits of being immune to disease, emotion-based effects, fatigue, exhaustion, uh, morale effects, and sleep. Uh, she also, by nature of her sort of elongated form, has like a like a inherent dodge bonus to AC basically. You know, she's because it's just harder to hit her. She's too skinny. Okay. Uh well that's that's where we're at. Okay, um Asher will call out as he uh unloads a full attack, rapid shot, deadly aim of his own. Uh if your name is Cassandra Lee, please interrupt me at any time. And then he will uh, 
send three bullets in her general direction. Uh, the last one is only a 12 against touch. Um, 12 will not hit touch. Uh, the other two are in the 20s. Uh, in the 20s seems pretty safe. Sorry, it would have been 13 because uh, of... No, never mind, point blank. Yeah, point blank is 30, so it would have been 13 if that matters. No. Okay. I wasn't fishing at his really good at game uh that is 21 points of damage from the two shots it's not very nice either i mean going for that tdf but now he's also standing in front of brixby and that's where he wants to be well uh it's brixby's turn he just got shot at several times luckily only hit twice yeah, and to that point, um, I was wrong in case anyone was looking at my sheet. My flat footed touch is 12, but 8, 9, and 11 were all under that, so I wouldn't have been hit anymore. Um, I was just looking at my touch, which was 15, but minus my three decks, that puts me at a 12 there. But just, just in case anyone's like, how is this flat footed touch 15? Because I was like, wait, that seems super high. So there's that. Um, Rixby is gonna, with a word and a, f- a motion, disappear, and then move. All right, thirty feet, right there. All right. Well, Kira is up. Um, Kira's gonna step out of the room because I still can't see anything but uh, green-haired corpses, Alwyn and Asher. Um. How many squares is this? One, two, three. Stop here, and then I'm going to keep moving up until this guy. Mm, no, that doesn't make sense. One, two, three, four, five. I also don't think I can actually move any further. Um, but hey, I'm closer. Except for Brixby again, somehow. Um, you don't know where Brixby is, though. Sure, right. Yes, of course, that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move up until this um, rough terrain area, and then I think I'm going to stop because I can't do... Um, I'll double move. That's fine. Can you double move while fatigued? I'm pretty sure I'm fatigued after that, and it's just I can't run, right? I can double move, so I'll get yeah. up in her face. Hi, I don't know who you are. I need you to stop hurting my friends. I don't care if we're supposed to be friendly. Uh, I don't know you. And that's gonna be my turn. And that was all of your movement? You, you had to stop right in front of her? Um, oh yeah, fair. No, it's not. Um, how, like, what is this, two squares of, of difficult terrain? So I can do it here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, she Unless doesn't... that was your play, I'm not trying to play for you. If you wanted to block for her, for, you know, block Asher and Alan from her, by all means. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. She is not super happy about Kira being in her face. Let's see, I think she is going to take a five-foot step back and to the left. Oh, let's see, because Asher just shot her, too. He just shot her a bunch of times. She doesn't know Brixby's there. Yeah, come and get me. Hmm. I think she's going to full withdraw and she's just going to double move on down here. So if Brixby wants, that does provoke because he has to move through. She has to move through three or two squares that he's in or threatens rather. Uh, I mean, I suppose I could take a hit with the tail blade. Um, you get the sneak damage. The blade yeah. ain't much, but I mean... No, it's it's. But then it's, she knows where you yeah, are. Yeah, it's about. I used a vanish. I didn't use a greater invisibility. So it's about yeah. becoming visible over a, a potential melee attack that like. Sure. Yeah, it's 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 questionable how much that's actually going to do to that person. So I'm staying invisible. I'm not going to take it. All right. Well, she ran away down to the south and kind of tucked herself behind some machinery. And Alwyn's up. Uh, Alwyn is going to look at Asher, who was calling out to her, and he knows everybody's been looking for an android, and he doesn't know if this is or not, and he'll say, Is that the one we're looking for? Should we chase her? I don't think so, but 
Well, I don't think it's her, but she wants to murder us. So then we should chase her. And without waiting to hear <laughs> if Asher replies or not, he's just going to uh, double move down. Actually, you know what? He's only going to single move. He's going to go to just get over here, kind of across from Kira. Not. Oh, wait, no, I am in Asher's way that way. You would assume Asher's probably going to move and not stand there. But... Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to put my token where it's not directly in front of Asher, but forgot you were one over from where I thought you were. So, yeah, he's just going to single move, and that's it. He's not going to ready anything or anything because he doesn't know what he can hit or what from this distance is going to be any good. All right. Asher. Okay. Asher has enough movement to get right up next to Brixby. Uh, to the west. Oh, well, I guess he doesn't have Brixby's there. That, uh, makes it hard for me to heal you, but man. Uh, but that's okay. <clears throat> so Asher will move and then ready, uh, to... Uh, and he'll draw his left revolver as he moves. So he's got a gun in both hands. He's used three shots on the right already. Uh, and he's going to ready a standard action, single deadly aim shot if this creature gets within 25 feet. All right, Invisible Brixby. Brixby does something on his turn with his hands. That's mean. That's his turn. Mean to say. <laughs> you're trying to hurt my feelings, I think, is what you're saying. Um, Kier. A little bit. Um... I don't want to chase her away, but I also don't want to stand here. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to see how far I can double move. Uh, I don't, I like can't physically block her though. Well, can I? It looks like from what I can see, she's getting ready to head into one of two doors. Um, if I stand in front of the door, can I obscure her path? Even not just mechanically necessarily, but she'd have to like go past yeah, but me you, to get in. You'd have to do like an acrobatics to get through her square to, to get, get past there. her. Yeah. Or the southern door, you wouldn't have to. Yeah, I mean, I'll go for the southern door because I don't know what my acrobatics is. So I'll stand right here. Let's alt it in. Uh, double move there, and that's all I can do. Hopefully she doesn't go through that other door that I'm not in front of. That's my turn. Well, she doesn't like that. You might have screwed things up for her a little bit there. Good, she shouldn't punch my friends in the face with a gun. Well, I think she's going to take a little diagonal five-foot step, and she'll say, You'll never take me alive. Your tricks don't work here. And um, she's going to do a full attack, semi-auto. Uh, she's going she's gonna to aim him at Kira, I think, to start. Fine, so, Kira has so many health hit, you mean, Do it. With deadly aim. That's cool. Bring it. I don't care. I'm a blood rager. You can't hurt me. I'm literally unstoppable. Uh, 12 oh, versus touch. Yeah. Oh. So, okay, then yeah. So that'll definitely hit. So 17 cold damage. I've got a notebook now. Um, and the next one's definitely going to hit. Uh, 24. Uh, yep, that'll do it. Uh, 17 again. Okay, hang on. I have to do math on my calculator. Keep going. Uh, third one's a 25. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's I solid. rolled so bad against Brixby and so well against Kira. I have twice Brixby's hit points. It's fine. Uh, that's 13 cold damage on that one. And the last one is a 16 versus touch. Uh, yeah, that's all of these are great. I, st I do not regret at all antagonizing this person. I hate her. We're never going to be friends. Um, that's 12 damage on that one. 59 points of damage between four hits. That's fine. Come on. What's the worst that could happen? Well, imagine if she had sneak attack on all of those. I will not imagine that. And um, Alwyn is up. Uh, okay. Uh, if I get in front of Invisible Brixby, is that going to mess up what he's planning to do? 
Uh, I guess that's not really a question I can ask because I don't yeah, know he's there. You can't ask me, so <laughs> just just do your thing. Yeah, so actually he doesn't know he's there, so he maybe feels something as he bumps past him. But he's going to... Oh, but is that... Uh, is that blocking... Is that blocking Asher? Everywhere I want to go is blocking Asher. You know, he actually he can move all the way to here and not be blocking Asher. Uh, and be within 30 feet of her. Uh, so she needs to give me a, I believe it's fortitude. Yes, she needs to give me a fortitude save. I'm using my uh, once a day build ability that I haven't used in forever on her. Is it poison? It is not poison. Um, 23. That is a save, so I don't want to be half damage of this uh, five through six. As he calls down the interstellar void, and it basically just like opens a hole into space around her and she gets hit with it. So that is a uh, half, so that is 10 points of cold damage if she has any resistance to cold. All right, and she's like, I knew it. I knew you would reveal yourself. Um, Asher? Asher is going to take a five foot step to the south, spend a grip point as a swift action to focus his aim, uh, since I doubt she's evil. Uh, and will then do a rapid shot, full attack, deadly aim on little Queen Elsa down there. Because she's shooting cold damage. Never bothered her anyway. Uh, and here we go. Natural 20 on the first one. I don't like it. I just rolled all of the hits first. Uh, the lowest was a... God, my brain is broken. 16 against touch. Uh, 16 misses. Okay, so I'm looking at two hits, one of which is possibly a crit. I'm going to roll to confirm. Oh, yeah, that one's at the highest BAB. So that is a 7. Yeah, uh, 17. Actually, I shouldn't be so confident. Uh, 17 versus touch will not confirm. Wait, wait. She's in point blank shot. It's an 18. Ah, 18 confirmed. Yes! My big shot in my baby. Kid you not, that was a portal dice crit. Thank you, uh, Fennec and Finch, formerly known as Cozy Gamer. Here's going to be, uh, well, because it was a crit and a hit, that's going to be 5d8 plus uh, 55. Thanks wow. to focused aim, because that brought each one up with the deadly aim to be a plus 11 for each shot. So 5d8 plus 55. Uh, that is 81 points of damage. Boom, headshot. She goes down, insta-dead. Just nothing left of her but a smoking crater where her head should have been. I hate to make her a liar, but... I believe by taking off her head, we did take her mind. She said, she said we never would. I don't know where you are, Brixby. Are you okay? She did say that. <laughs> no. So yeah, he uh, makes himself visible and is like, I could um, very much use some assistance. He is. He is at 9 of 57. I have a wand that's still got 39 charges on it. That be out of what's your what do you say your max was 57? Uh, yeah, so if we were averaging, that would be like nine would put I mean, five on top. I could of throw that. a lay on uh, hands. I feel bad about using that many. But oh, yeah, because that if if we want to use one of those first and then do the ones after, we can do that and then what it'd be six ones. No, uh, yeah, it depends on what I get from Asher and then I'll go almost there. max 11 on 2d6. Yeah. Those 2d6, which were picked out by my child. <laughs> Great job. Thank you very the 45 much. 45 then goes down to a 35, so it'll be, yeah, so it'll be seven charges. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just take seven charges on that, and that'll okay. that'll put me uh, just under full. All right. Yeah. Yeah, he just spits up a little bit of blood. The fur kind of goes over the hole that was in the center of his body. Something, something, duodenum joke. Um, and... What What even just happened? Um, think that android lady shot you just a, a bunch of times. 
And then Asher shot her. And I guess now we should poke her a little bit. Just make sure she's dead. I'm going to jab her with the She might be like the deadest person that you've ever seen at this point. (laughs) That I've ever encountered. (laughs) Yeah, this is peak dead. (laughs) Oops, AP over. (laughs) That would be so bad. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess we, um, you know... That examine the, the remainder of the corpse. Well, um, thankfully the headshot shouldn't have hurt her sweet <laughs> armor. Yeah, she's got um, yeah. five concussion grenades on her, um, two batteries. Uh, she has that freeze gun, um, which I'll give you for free. That is a time-worn zero pistol. Sadly, she fired it so many times that there are only two charges left in there. And then she's wearing a... Um, technological suit of some kind which you probably don't care about uh, I got a 24 um, let me see 31 it's my 21 damn you've been killing oh. those rolls Jeff um, a 31 okay, 31 is enough yeah I I went from like 5 or below to <laughs> 16 or above um, you've seen one of these before um on the corpse of Urian Valako, uh, but it wasn't the same grade. You're looking at a masterwork green scatterlight suit. So a green grade scatterlight suit um, gives you an AC of plus one when you're wearing it, but when activated against beam attacks, a touch AC bonus of plus five. Weirdly situational thing, but it is masterwork. Probably worth a little bit of yeah, money. I assume it's medium size. Plus, I don't, I don't really need it. It is medium size. Um, does it still have the spell failure if it's masterwork? Um, I don't know. It says it's got a ten percent. I thought masterwork just reduced ACP yeah. by one. So no ACP if basically, but still the five percent spell failure. And that's a first revolver crit. That's fun. It's not any different from the pistol, but it's cool. <laughs> so there's one door well, to the actually, south. Yeah, there's two doors right by each other right there. And then there's one door further to the south there. And does this appear to just be some, like, hallway uh, to the west? It looks like you're sort of down there is, like, the end of the machines to the southwest. And then there's, like... The hallway is kind of choked with rubble as it looks like the sort of middle part of like whatever goes from this room to whatever's on the other side has been kind of crushed by a cave-in. So. So no, no go down there. Well, it, it looked, it's tough to tell from where you are if you can get through or not. Okay. Uh, do you want to do, what, what doors are people feeling? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check them, but as, uh, evidenced by the meta-narrative here, I should apparently never go through them. So, just point. Maybe let's start. She looked like she was going to go through one of these two doors that are in front of our faces, by which I mean slightly to the right, east. Maybe one of those, but keep your face just away a little bit. I mean... Do you need to look to yeah, look for traps? My eyes like, are there, unfortunately, still. Dang, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just perhaps a mirror <laughs> or a series of mirrors, you know, like a periscope. Uh, that is. Oh, yeah. a periscope. Good job. <laughs> Only a three off the die for a seventeen. Uh, I'm sure he's still pretty beat up. Yeah, it looks fine to me. It's good enough. I'm gonna open it. Oh. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Asher got there first. Um. Asher runs into the room. He runs in and because he's not Brixby, he doesn't get his face caved in first. (laughs) Uh, This looks like... It's weird. (laughs) Everyone has these readied actions. The only punch or attack. (laughs) When I walk through the door, after you three come through. Yeah, I was going to say, there's still an invisible person in there (laughs) waiting. Just waiting for Brixby to come through. Uh, This is another small room. Uh, In this case, workbenches and tools litter it. And... um, an unusual looking forge. Uh, there are a variety of bladed weapons hanging on the wall, and a shelf on the north end of the room holds uh, polished humanoid skulls. I would like to examine the skulls with primarily my eyes. 
just just a quick peek. Well, it, I mean, I guess if there's anything impressive about them, I'm not going to be able to see it with just my face. I think so. if you're looking fairly closely at them, uh, they don't look like they're made of bone. It looks like some kind of artificial skull, and you know, they're all kind of not normal skull shaped. They're kind of squished to the side or stretched or kind of partially caved in but shiny got a real indiana jones 4 situation oh, yeah. here indiana jones such four there wasn't an indiana jones 4 <laughs> i knew that was gonna upset one no, of you it was don't great let them get away with that they made it and it's bad yeah remember the whole refrigerator part nope uh yeah i mean i don't know can we oh it's what is it it's not acquiesce it's another word that begins with a and it's a skill a praise. That's it. A praise. <laughs> See if these are, if anything, the blades or the skulls are worth money. We just scoop them into the bag. Um, I don't have appraisal, so not me. Yeah, I mean, the the blades look like kind of not really anything usable. Just kind of tools or of some kind, but like time worn and torn apart. But uh, if anybody wants to do knowledge engineering on any of the equipment bouncing around in this room... Knowledge engineering, you say? A natural 20 for a 33? <laughs> yeah, Asher is at home in this, um, whatever this place is. I think he is able to figure out that this is the sort of ruined remains of some kind of production lab, like that they were building things here, um, a bunch of different stuff, and it looks like somebody has gathered up uh, looks like the components, it looks like they were trying to build like a, a long range communication device of some kind. And um, it looks like while they haven't completed any sort of long range communication device, they are several smaller, uh, like short range personal communication devices that are uh, time worn, but they look like they're usable. And they're fully charged. Ooh, it, it looks like the occupants at some point in time were trying to create a device that would allow them to communicate longer distance. I don't believe they succeeded in that task. There are some of these devices that might allow us to continue to walk and also talk with each other uh, within a shorter distance. We should call them something like ambulatory short-range communication devices. <laughs> I'm still workshopping it. I just discovered them. I cannot believe the range on this is one mile. That is wild. I hope we're never a mile from each other. Well, Vargas. But, um... I can't believe that there's three of them and not four. <laughs> or, or not just, like... A blank that says, insert number of players in your AP. <laughs> no, they just assume there's a wizard or somebody who can do message or sending or something. All right. Y'all want to check these doors to the south? Or that door to the south? By the south, do you mean the little one or the double one? Southeast, uh, my bad. The the little guy, the one okay. singular. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. Right, cool. Okay. The tiny one. Just the one. Yeah. So Let's see who's going to punch us behind Jamming that. myself in next to we'll bricks. Do the same check. Uh, that's a 30 for uh, traps. Uh, it doesn't look trapped at all. Yep, and bricks will stand off to the side. It kills him to not go into these rooms first because he really loves the technology. But Yeah, but not as much as actually being killed, <laughs> I assume. <laughs> um, we'll just jam, jam on in. Can we go inside? No? Is this not a door? Oh. Well, when hey, you pop open first. this door, you see a churning mass of those deformed androids. Uh, looks like this is kind of their living quarters. There's a series of, like it was probably a former storeroom, but the metal shelves have been arranged on the floor and draped with um, thick cloth or metal plating to sort of be beds. And um, that's a claustrophobic little room, and these things are all gonna stand up and grab their makeshift morning stars as uh, as they see you. I think it's gonna be a time to roll for initiative once more. Alright, how about Alwyn this time? Alwyn almost got a natural 20. Uh, 19 on the die for a 26. That's pretty speedy. 
Now we'll barrel Brixby. Brixby did get a natural 20 for a 28. Wow. Extra speedy. And Asher? Uh, 12 for a 17. And Kira? Uh, just slightly faster than last time. A 6. Wait. What did I say it was? I did say it was a 6. 11. All right. Let's see what we got here. Just a couple more of these androids. No big whoop. Sort descending, and I think Brixby is first. All right, now I am the one who punches faces. Brixby is going to, uh, looking at red, that is the closest to him. Brixby is going to uh, push his hands together and point. Oh, you know what I totally forgot to do last time? I get two Scorching Rays at this point. Um, so the first one is a 25 versus touch. <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. Alrighty, and so that is, which is, uh, wow, that's a lot. It's 35 points of damage from the first one. All right, red is very, very badly hurt. All right, and the second ray, also towards red, focusing fire. That is unfortunate. Oh, that's a natural 20. I thought that was a two. Wow. All right, I guess I'm going to roll again to see if I um, crit. Yeesh. This is the massive damage. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, and I rolled a 19 as a follow-up for that. Thank you for trying to make me feel better, roll 20, for nearly dying. Um, Okay, so That's a confirmed crit. So that's another 43 points of damage. Melted into a pile of slag. And then Brixby is going to, to, to move away. <laughs> That's a little bit. <laughs> uh, floats away on his disc like the hero that he is. My work here is done. All right, Alloin, you just saw Brixby just unload a giant pile of fire into a room. As one does. Yeah, actually, he's got line of sight from there. Uh, so he will just do a instead of taking out his wand uh he is going to you know what he's gonna scream at blue so that is a uh, fortitude fortitude save um natural 19 for a 25 that will save so you're not dazed uh, but you are dazzled and you will take half damage. Uh, so that is three points of thonic damage and he's dazzled for one round. Alright, that's blue. Dazzled and damaged. Alright, Asher. Uh, Asher is going to take a five foot step to the northeast, right in front of Alan's. Apologies. A little bit hypocritical, uh, and then we'll uh, take a couple shots at Blue himself. Uh, we'll just go ahead and take three more and just burn through all this ammo and gold. Last one's definitely a miss. Uh, we're looking at the lowest being in 18 against touch. That will definitely hit. Since I didn't call it as deadly aimed. Uh, 14 points of damage on blue. All right. That hurts blue. It hurts blue's feelings. All set? Yeah, it was a five-foot step and a full attack. That's Asher's turn. All right. Well, orange. Uh, orange, you're glad that orange is going to step up into the doorway, go into that deadly calm, and um, swing a mace at Asher. And he's right up in his face. Uh, 26 to hit. Yep. And that is 12 damage. Okay. On uh, that. Oh, I got another android. Now it's all plugged up. Uh, blue, in its dazzled glory, is going to step into Red Square and swing through that doorway, kind of around a corner. And not hit Asher. 
in its dazzledy ways. He only missed by one. It was dazzled worth it. It missed by a <laughs> lot. <laughs> uh, Kira is up. Okay. Let's see. Real crowded here. Um, I think. I mean, I guess I'll just attack. Uh, orange is under red, right? Blue. Oh, the one that just stepped up. Oh, blue. Whichever one is in, I can't see which one is under red, but that one I'm gonna gonna go for. Um, it's 19. Uh, I am, let's see, let's roll again. Ugh, it's a two. Um, so I don't think that will confirm, but it'll be a regular hit. Uh, and I did not say it was raging, so we'll hold off on that until the next turn. Um, 3d6, 9 plus 14. So, 23? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, blue looking bad. Mm, not as good. But I think the second time we said, I wrote this down too, is 11? Yeah, 7, 18. 18, does 18, 18 hit blue? 18 uh, 3d6 again. And 14, 24 points of damage again at blue. Down goes blue. He was my boy. Don't care. So sorry. All right. Uh, that's my turn. Green is going to take a five foot step to the north, pull out a grenadey doodle, and just chuck it kind of over towards Alowin. So we're going to roll that five. Yep. So there is just a grenade sitting in Alowin Square right now. Um, waiting for initiative 11. And uh, Brixby's up. Oh boy. Um, so, can you pick up the grenade and throw it once it's already been thrown? So, Brixby is going to float down and pick up the grenade and try to throw it right back here, I suppose. (laughs) Uh, Can he? Hold on, though. Question. I don't think he can do that because that's it's too many a move actions. action to pick up. That's why I was saying. Uh, well, but it's a five foot step. Oh, well, the, if it's a five foot, then he can do both. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you, yeah, then you can do it. Yeah, yeah, it's a five foot step awesome. south, and then a move action okay. to pick it up, and then I'm gonna toss it back there. So yeah. I'm gonna make a roll. That's uh, a twelve for a twenty. So it is now back here. I'll do the draw. Oh, you do the drawing. It is back oh, there. I just dragged the circle. Your circle is so nice. Um, and that is Brixby's turn. <laughs> All right, Alloin is up. You no longer have a grenade at your feet. Yay. Alloin, uh, he is going to cast uh, Burning Disarm at Orange. And uh, I did mention this to Sam last time. It didn't end up on air. The person that that's cast on actually can if they choose to not take the reflex to drop their weapon and just take the damage and hang on uh, so I don't know if Sam's yeah, I, android I, would be smart enough to know that I think Orange <laughs> wants to keep that that weapon Orange likes that this it's particular just, chunk of jagged scrap metal won't attempt the save and will just take the damage so that is 5d4 uh, that is 10 points of fire damage. Orange didn't like that. And that is his turn. All right, that brings up Asher. You've got an android in your face. Big disgrace. <laughs> I'm going to rock it. Uh, Asher's going to take a single deadly aim shot, uh, provoking from Orange should he wish to take an attack of opportunity with his most favorite of chunks of metal. That one on the attack of opportunity. Hey, it's because it's hot. It's, like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Uh, does a 17... 17 hits touch on these guys, right? Mm-hmm. Alright, so we're going to do a quick D8 plus 7. Uh, oh, not bad. 6. Uh, so 13 points of damage. Alright, that's not bad on, on orange. That's... And then he'll uh, move action, close that door. 
That's pretty mean. Yeah. Five foot step to the southwest. Alright, well, Orange is gonna move action, open that door. And then I think. Just take five foot step out of the room. Boo! Now we punch you in the face, ready to action. <laughs> and then, let's see, Blue doesn't get a turn because Blue is dead. That takes us to initiative 11, so the bomb explodes. And a five foot step was not enough. So, my reflex saves. Orange first. Natural two, that's a fail. Green. Natural five, also a fail. This is, this is very upsetting for them. They're being hoisted by their own petards. 10, 15, 19 damage on both of them. I'm going to assume that I should also take one of those. I can't see where the bomb is, but unless that lip protects me. You'll kind of have cover from the wall. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, I don't think Cuff I don't think you can go around corners, but body. it's it's still got a straight line at orange, so you're good. And it's your turn. Orange looks like needs food badly in the parlance of our gauntlet legend. Missed. I don't understand that one, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I would love to just shove it back in the room. I guess there's not really a purpose now except to say, hey, stop moving. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll do the regular face punch. Say, um, this is usually how we welcome my friend Brixby, but we like him. And hit it. Hit it with a chainsaw. 16 plus... Oh, I am. I'm raging. I'm doing it. I'm raging now. Uh... 1632. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll hit. Uh, cool. 3d6. 27 on orange. Splat. Excellent. Great. I will hang out here because it would be bad. Actually, can I move if I didn't use the second? Yeah, guy? you just took the one swing, yeah. so you still have a move action. Cool. I'm gonna. I want to try and shimmy away so that I'm not in Asher's way. What if I? What? If, I guess I could just move, move. Yeah, like into the room. Uh, that bomb has already gone off, so it's fine. So I'm just gonna, yeah, trap this guy in here. Asher can still kind of reach you. Uh, good. Cool. 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 But that's my All turn. Right, it's gonna go into a deadly calm and hit you. Yeah. It's Good super luck. mad. I should stop saying uh, that. 21 to hit. Uh, 21 will hit. Blur. Blur! Blur! Every time. <laughs> 47. Yeah, that's good, Blur. Uh, 11 damage. 11 damage. That's gonna be... That, that was probably the last thing it's ever gonna get to do. So, Brixby's up. Brixby is gonna disc into the room. I pulled out my rapier as I went, flanking with my buddy Big Stuff. We're gonna try to end this fight right now. Nope. <laughs> Brixby, <laughs> Brixby in, instead uh, does the exact same thing. Uh, it slips and takes a header against something, I guess. I guess in this way, it's just uh, the curious leg. Probably something along the lines of trying to swarm with the disc and, and everything else, so... Um, yep, that's his turn. <laughs> All right, Alowin. Uh, Alowin. It's a little dangerously. Uh, Alowin is going to step forward, uh, hopefully not blocking Jeff's shot. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's not. He's going to block Jeff's shot. Uh, that's fine. Do Alowin. Oh, okay keeping in the worst angles for people who have gotten so I think Sam's redrawing these maps to make that happen uh, <laughs> he is going to attempt to uh, just reach out and uh, touch this guy we cast defensively 15 on the die gets it because I get a plus 16 uh, and then the actual attempt to touch him is a Team, melee touch attack. That is a 16 against uh, what you call it, uh, touch AC. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so he is going to... Actually, I should make sure uh, they can take uh, negative damage, right? Yeah. Negative damage. damage. Okay. That is an 8 on the die, so that is going to be 13 points of negative energy damage as I uh, touch him and cast uh, Inflict Light Wounds. Don't they get a will save on that? In your hand, if I create you channel negative energy that deals 1d8 points of damage plus one point per caster level. Okay, no save. Okay. Oh, wait, no DC will for half. Okay. They have that higher up instead of in the description. It's up in the... Nine on mechanical the will save. Part. Uh, that is below the 18 you need to beat that. So that is the full 13. All right. Asher is up. Mm, it, it's still alive in there. Asher will walk 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll scooch down there. This is... Seems excessive. Uh, Asher will take a single deadly aim shot. And that's a 16 against touch. Yep. On the, I was hoping this would be a crit, because that was the only roll I've done on the d20 my child picked up for me. Uh, 13 points of bludgeoning and piercing damage. 13 HP left. Crit point! The um, last of the androids goes tumbling to the ground. And that once again, almost the exact same spot as last week. I'm going to bed. Nice to hear there's no more androids in this AP. Hooray, consistency. Good night, Azu's grandma. <laughs> Good night, Sam. Good night, Sam. Good night, everyone. Yay. Against the machine. Against the Machine is property of Network Against the Machine, LLC, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods Adventure Path are property of Paizo Publishing. See their website for more details. The theme Against the Machine was written and performed by our own Zach. See the show notes for additional music and sound licensing. If you enjoyed the show, we encourage you to leave us a review. Go high, go high, go high, go high, go high, go high. In a quiet, empty room. Nailing the quiet part. <laughs> the quiet part is, is key. Uh, Brixby looks around. And no else notice. Oh. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. You <laughs> have a voice effect. I don't. This will be a w- fun one to edit because <laughs> me, I'm the brain tired half. Uh, but a short sword made for a regular person should still work fine for a halfling. Like, there's not that big of a difference in size. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, and Brixby's small is five feet. <laughs> yeah, remember, I'm huge. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally seven yeah. foot six. Uh, no, that is the lament of the tiny guy. Um. Yeah. I don't mean to make a liar. I really hope that wasn't Cassandra. We roll to put that back. Yeah, just put that back together. Just pop that head right in. Cause she has we'll just edit in my one liner I was trying to get real quick. Yeah. Boop. 10, 15, 19 damage on both of them. So much damage I had to hit my boom.